Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number six from the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1 October 2021 exam. And here we have a question which is about a cubic curve. It says a curve has equation y equals f of x, where f of x equals 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 3 squared. And we've got to sketch the graph of this curve C. And we can see it's cubic because if you expand all of these, you end up with an x cubed as the highest power. So a cubic curve, we're going to sketch this graph. Now cubic curves have the basic shape um, either going up and up like this. Let me just uh, change the pen. It's a bit too thick that. Okay, so it either has a shape like this, where it goes like you can say up and up again. That's when the x cubed has a positive uh, coefficient, or it has a, a shape that goes like this, where you have the x cubed with a negative coefficient. Okay, and of course we can see if we expanded this, the x cubed will be a positive um, coefficient. So we know it's going to have this type of shape. Um, and when we draw, when you sketch any type of curve, we need to find out a few bits of information. Apart from once we kind of determine its basic shape, uh, we have to find out where it crosses the axis. So we've got to find out where it crosses the y-axis. We've got to find where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, so let's try. Let's look at the y-axis first. Now it crosses the y-axis when x equals zero. So when x equals zero, I can say y is going to be two times one times minus 3 squared. Okay, zero, x will be 0. That's going to be 2 times 1 times 9, which is 18. So it crosses the y-axis at the point 0, 18. So I know where it crosses the y-axis. We've got to also find where it crosses the y, the x-axis. Now it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. Okay, it crosses the x-axis because the x-axis is the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0. The equation of the y-axis is x equals 0. So it crosses the x-axis when y is 0. So we equate this equation to 0. So it's 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 3 squared is equal to 0. Now, if we solve this, we will have either x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0 or x minus 3 equals 0 again. All right? So you have x equals minus 1 and x equals 3. And this is a special type of root. So, yeah, it's like you got the x equals 3 twice. This is called a repeated root. Okay, a repeated root has a special type of um, kind of um, characteristic when you draw it. The curve turns at that point on the x-axis. It doesn't cut through the x-axis at the point. It turns on the x-axis. When you have a single root like this, it cuts through the x-axis at that point. So this curve is going to touch the x-axis two places. One point it will cut through it, the other place it will turn on it. Okay, so here we can now draw um, the graph because we have the basic shape. We have the place where it crosses the y-axis, the place where it crosses the x-axis. So I'm going to draw a pair of axes with a ruler neatly. That's how you should do it. Okay, so I'm going to draw my pair of axes Okay, and make it neat and use a ruler. I have my x and y axis. I know it passes through the point 18 on the y-axis and I know that it's going to cut through the x-axis at minus 1 and touch the x-axis at 3. So you have to try to make it kind of like, uh, you know, a bit realistic in terms of, it doesn't matter about the scale of the y-axis, but what matters is, um, you know, this minus 1 should be closer to 0 than 3, but it's not. Has, it doesn't have to be accurately measured with a ruler, okay? Now we know that it's going to, it's going to turn on the x-axis here and it's going to touch the x-axis here, so it's going to cut through the x-axis here. So we can see it's going to have this type of, it's going to come through here, it's going to go up, all right, it's going to go up, and then it's going to turn, and turn on, 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 y equals, on x equals 3. So basically what we can see here, it's going to have a shape that looks like this. So what I, what I like to do here is I like to actually make my curve first. So I'm going to get rid of all of this. I just did this to get an idea, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my curve first. This is how I like to do my um, my graphs. So I'll get these things out of the way first. Okay, in fact, I'll just get rid of them all together. Okay, and I'll draw my curve first. So I'm going to draw a cubic curve. Okay, um, now I'll just draw a cubic curve as best as I can. Okay, so we're going to, I know it goes down, then up, like this. This is a, a cubic curve. Okay, I'll make this side a bit longer because I know that it's going to turn on the x-axis. So I know 
that this point is where it's going to turn. So I'm going to draw my x-axis in. Okay, it's going to turn on this point. So now I can say that that is my 3. And this is my negative 1. And we know that the x-axis will be closer to minus 1 than it is to 3. So I can draw my x-axis somewhere on this side. Closer to minus 1 than it is to 3. Okay, so that's, is that straight? That's straight. Okay, so that's y and that's x. Okay, that's 0 and that's going to be 18. So the best way to draw a cubic curve, instead of having all those points and trying to fit your graph through them and then, you, you know, sometimes you mess up, mess up with your shape of the graph, draw a graph which is like as perfect as it can be with your free hand without worrying about what it has to pass through draw the right shape we know it's up and up and then you fit in your values around it so you know it turns on the x-axis at three and it cuts through the x-axis at minus one so you can draw your x-axis so that it touches this point here and then you can draw your y-axis such that it's closer to this side than that side because of course the origin will be closer to minus one than it is to three and you've got your perfect well not perfect but you know quite a, a good graph okay make sure it doesn't go back or double back on itself that it goes up so just you know, try and make it as neat as you can and there you have it so that's how you would how i would sketch a graph so i would always sketch the the curve first and then i would put all the things around it so as long as i know the correct shape that is a positive x cube so it's up and up you should be fine so that's part a done for this question okay now for part b it says write f of x in the form ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d where a b c and d are constants to be found so now we're going to take this and we are going to expand it so we have f of x equals two times what i'll do first is i'll i I'll, i can expand this part so i have i can say 2x plus 1 i'll have 2x plus 2 sorry and then i need to expand this bracket which is x squared minus 6x plus 9 okay i can't multiply these by that until this has been expanded because the index comes first then I can expand the brackets more so 2x times 2x squared is 2x cubed 2x times minus 6x is minus 12x squared 2x times 9 is plus 18x 2 times x squared is plus 2x squared and 2 times minus 6x is minus 12x and 2 times 9 is plus 18 so we're left with 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 2x squared is minus 10x squared 18x minus 12x is plus 6x and plus 18. so that is f of x in the form required okay that's part b um and it says a b c d are constants to be found you don't actually have to write them down um, but you can do if you want to so a is 2 b is minus 10 c is 6 and d is 18. Okay, so there, there we have f of x in the form that they want us to write it in. And then it says, hence, find the equation of the tangent to c at the point where x equals a third. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take, um, I'll just write it down here. I know what f of x is in this, in this form. Okay, let me just put this up here so I can see what's happening. Okay, let's write this. So I know what f of x is in the form, the original form. And I can see what it is in the form that they want us to. We want to find the equation of the tangent to the curve to C at the point where X equals one third. So we want to find the equation of a tangent to a curve. Now, let's go back to the curve. One, of, one third is going to be somewhere over here. Okay, somewhere over here. So the tangent would be something like, like this. It just touches a curve at a certain point, right? And to find the equation of the tangent, we need a point on the graph and we need the gradient of the graph. Okay, that's what we need. If I can find the equation of this line, I'd have to know a point on the line and I would have to know the gradient of this line. Now, when you find the differential, when you differentiate a, a function, you get the gradient function. So if I find f dash x, that will tell me the gradient of that curve for any value of x that I want. So if I put x equals a third into the gradient function, that will give me the gradient of this curve at the point when x equals a third. And to find a point on the curve, I can replace x equals a third into the original equation, and that will give me the y value when x is one third. When I've got those two things, I can find the equation of the tangent. So let's first find the gradient of the tangent by finding the differential of this. This is going to be 6x squared minus 20x 
plus 6. And if I substitute into there the value of 1 third, I'm going to get 6 times 1 over 3 squared minus 20 times 1 over 3 plus 6, which is 6 over 9 minus 20 over 3 plus 6. We can just stick that in our calculator if we want to. If you have 6 over 9 minus 20 over 3 and plus 6, that gives us 0. Okay, so we can see that the gradient, so in fact, we go back to our sketch, all right, we'll see that that's where at one third, in fact, it's, it's going to be horizontal. So it's going to be at the place where it turns, the place where it turns. Okay, that's going to be when x equals one third, okay, the gradient's going to have, the tangent's going to be horizontal. So it's going to be y equals whatever that value of y is when x equals a third. That will be the equation of this of this curve. So that we know that the gradient of the tangent is equal to zero when x equals a third. Okay, so that, that means therefore the equation is going to be uh, y equals whatever x is when um, whatever, it's going to be y, y sorry, y, y is whatever f of x is when x equals zero. So we can say that f one third is going to be, if we take the original equation, let's put it back into this because this is probably easier to deal with. So you have a third plus one and a third minus three squared. That will be the value of y when x equals one third. So when x equals one third, that will be the y value. That's two times, that's four over three. And you have a third minus three, which is going to be, um, that's minus, that's nine over three. So it's a minus 8 over 3 squared. Let's just put that in, in our calculator. So we'll end up with 2 times, sorry, 2 times. We're going to have 4 over 3. And you're going to have times, that's going to be 1 third minus 3, as I said, which is it's 1 third minus 9 over 3, which is minus 8 over 3 squared. So we don't need the minus because we know it's going to be positive. 8 over 3, all of that squared. And that gives us 512 over 27. So y equals 512 over 27. We can leave it in that form. So we, we know that y equals mx plus c. If the gradient is 0, so therefore y is going to be 512 over 27. That will be the equation of, the, of that line. Because y, it is a line which is horizontal. 512 over 27. That will be the equation of that line. Okay, y equals mx plus c, m is 0, the y-intercept is 512 over 27, so that is the equation of that horizontal line. Okay, so there's the answer to question c of uh, question number 6, part c of this um, paper. Uh, that was the last question of, or the last part of question 6. I hope that was clear. So the gradient was 0. Whenever you have a uh, 0 gradient, it's a horizontal line. So we find the y value when x is a third. Okay, which is the point at which you want to find the equation of the tangent, and that will give us the equation of the tangent, y equals 512 over 27. Okay, so um, other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that should appear in this area. Other questions from this topic of graphs, I guess, and I'll also put it in another playlist to do with differentiation and applications of differentiation, can be found in a playlist that should appear over here. And you can su subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link over here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.